Let's now shift focus to Sri Lanka. The country has a new Prime Minister, Ranul Vikramasinghe. He has done the job before. Vikramasinghe is serving as Sri Lanka's Prime Minister for the sixth time. But none of his previous tenures compare to what is happening in Sri Lanka right now. A nightmare is unfolding in the country. Sri Lanka is on the brink of economic ruin. The shortages and public unrest have led to a humanitarian crisis, while the government faces fierce public resistance. President Gotapaya Rajapaksa escaped a censure motion in parliament today. If passed, the motion would have blamed him for the economic crisis. Separately, a no-confidence motion was defeated in parliament today. 122 lawmakers voted in favour of a Vikramasinghe-led government. 76 voted against, 26 MPs abstained from the vote. So Vikramasinghe remains in charge for now. The cabinet of ministers will be rejected. They have a difficult task ahead. The new Prime Minister is not mincing his words. In fact, yesterday he asked the Sri Lankans to be prepared to make some compromises. The next couple of months will be the most difficult ones in our lives. We must prepare ourselves to make some sacrifices and face the challenges of this period. I have no desire to hide the truth and lie to the public, although these facts are unpleasant and terrifying. This is the true situation. What are these harsh truths? Vikramasinghe yesterday revealed the true extent of Sri Lanka's crisis. He summed up the entire economic situation in just a few tweets. The situation is scary. The money is drying out. The shortages are alarming. This Twitter thread describes Sri Lanka's economic misery. Let's tell you what it says. First, the foreign reserves. In November 2019, Sri Lanka had over $7 billion. Vikramasinghe says the country's treasury is struggling now to find even $1 million. Basically, Sri Lanka is out of cash. Next, fuel stocks. Vikramasinghe said yesterday there is only one day worth of supply. Since then, Sri Lanka has managed to bring in a shipment from India, but those stocks will only last for a few days. Sri Lanka needs at least $75 million to ease the supplies. As of today, it does not have that kind of money. Colombo is trying to raise some cash from the open market to pay for the fuel stocks. Already the supplies are running out. Today, the fuel stations dried up in Colombo. Many of them put up this sign. What about electricity? Again, no good news for Sri Lankans. Power outages could increase to 15 hours a day. There is life-threatening shortage of medical goods. This includes drugs and surgical equipment. Turns out, Colombo has not paid suppliers for months. Almost $100 million are due. These are big problems and they cannot be solved in a day. So what is Vikramasinghe's game plan? He has come up with a range of proposals. There is a plan to announce a relief budget to ease the shortages. Sri Lanka will sell Sri Lankan Airlines, the country's national carrier. Colombo will also print more money. This will be used to pay the salaries of the government employees. Yes, the Sri Lankan government has not paid them too. Printing money is an extreme measure. It will further reduce the value of the Sri Lankan rupee. But considering the situation, there are no easy options for the country. Meanwhile, the protesters are digging in. Mahinda Rajapaksa's resignation has failed to pacify them. They want the president, Gotabaya Rajapaksa, to step down as well. He has bought some time by appointing Vikramasinghe. Why did Gotapaya Rajapaksa pick him? The president is hoping Vikramasinghe's goodwill abroad will help Sri Lanka tide over the economic crisis. But President Rajapaksa only has a small window of relief. The longer Sri Lanka's economic misery continues, the more difficult it will be for Gotapaya Rajapaksa to hold on to power. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.